Another accuser has come forward stating that Sean Diddy Coombs assaulted her when she was 17 years old. Now, the accuser is saying that she was ganged assaulted by multiple people, including Diddy. This is a photo of her sitting in his... Number one, I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. 50 Cent is set to do a documentary about Diddy and all of these allegations against him. Let's get into it. According to page six, a 50 who's had a decades long on and off feud with Diddy is training his production house on doing this documentary on the embattled bad boy mogul. Another accuser has come forward stating that Shay Diddy Combs assaulted her when she was 17 years old now. The accuser is saying that she was ganged assaulted by a multiple people, including Diddy. This is a photo of her sitting in his lap. Hello, everyone, I'm Dr. Ahmad Checker 50 Cent is set to do a documentary about Diddy and all of these allegations against him. Let's get into it. According to page 6A50, who's had a decades long on and out feud with Diddy is training his production house on doing this. Documentary on the embattled bad boy mogul, please chill a 50 cent. Stay steady, exposing an embarrassing Diddy. And it just got 10 times worse. Remember how 50 cent said that he was working on a documentary on Diddy's alleged crimes? Well, things just got way more serious because a fourth woman just came out to expose Diddy for allegedly saying her. And as you can expect, 50 immediately started to troll Diddy. But it goes deeper than that because he is now offering Diddy's alleged victims his 100% if they take Diddy down and y'all it looks like 50 just called war on Diddy. Now it was this documentary that claimed which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah. Check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense me nigh brother. So we not even can going to either there. With all due respect, but I appreciate you as a journalist asking thank you. Okay, so if there is one person who constantly keeps his foot on Diddy's neck, it's 50 Cent, and in the past couple of weeks alone, he, he has been mocking Diddy a lot ever since the lawsuit started after Cassie dropped her lawsuit. 50 was quick to jump into the conversation to say brother love brother love brother. Love you out here looking crazy as AMF. And even after Diddy settled the lawsuit with Cassie, 50 Cent didn't. Ease up on him, and he wrote paid that money real quick. Should have done that before the shark saw the blood in the water. And here they come in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Every woman he put his hand on, but as it turned out, 50 had. Always had an idea of the things that Diddy was putting Cassie through. You see a couple of days after Cassie's lawsuit hit an old video went viral, where 50 Cent was talking about how there was an old video going around back then of Cassie in a compromising situation with other men on telephone. And after the made right, right, and, and the be like matter of fact, they sent me the girl pictures. Like pictures of this girl, like not the that y'all saw, worse way worse wow are. You kidding me I like penetration pitches and, and nah, come on man. Come on fifth the video appears to have been taken during one of the freak offs, but it gets worse according to 50 Cent. He called Diddy to let him know what was going on and from Diddy's response 50 could tell that Diddy was the one who had been sending the videos around you. No, I really, I really kind of felt like those photographs was not happening because of Cassie. I felt like there was happening because of Puffy, right, right, oh, whoa. You know, saying, because when a girl moved from a man and she upgrading be insecure, you know what I'm saying? They start feeling some kind of way espy. Like, so yeah, 50 Cent has been determined to expose Diddy and after two more women came out to file lawsuits claiming that Diddy had allegedly set. Then 50 even went as far as to announce that he was working on a documentary about Diddy and the dark side of him that we didn't know about. He tweeted, did he do it coming soon GLG green light gang? And another one, he also said rapper, I thought Diddy was a billionaire music mob. If he's smart, he will file bankruptcy now anyone with real money knows why I'm saying this. I'm the best producer for the job guys. Here come the receipts. Well, it looks like 50 is about to get more chances to mock and expose Diddy because another woman just came out to file a lawsuit, claiming that Diddy allegedly saw her when she was just 17 years old. The woman is choosing to stay anonymous, so she is going by the pseudo. Nim Jane Doe, and she has some pretty wild things to say about the things that Diddy and his associates allegedly did to her in the lawsuit. She gave a great reason for staying anonymous, saying, Miss Doe knew that speaking out against defendants would be extremely difficult, and that she would likely be subjected to retaliation and defamatory slurs and attacks this was a smart decision because we all know how much hate Cassie got from diehard Diddy supporters who accused her of lying so that she could. 
But get a payday and speaking of Cassie Jane Doe, also made the smart decision to use the same lawyers that Cassie did. This helped it to give her more credibility because the odds are extremely low that the lawyers were going to represent her if she was lying or making things up for a payday here. Lawyers released a statement saying M. Doe has lived with her memories of this fateful night for 20 years, during which time she has suffered extreme emotional distress that has impacted nearly every aspect of her life and personal relationships, given the brave women who have come forward against Mrs. Combs and Mr. Pierre in recent weeks M. Doe is doing the same thing. This lawsuit had a lot in common with Cassie's lawsuit, like the fact that the front page also had a trigger warning, which again is a sign that there are a lot of me messed up things that were discussed in the file. It started off by saying specifically in 2003, when she was only 17 years old, and in the 11th grade, M. Du was sex trafficked and gan. Guess A by Mr. Comes Mr. Pierre and the Third Assailant, now the Third Assailant, wasn't named in the lawsuit, but the documents noted that the lawsuit is going to be updated soon and a name will be revealed the lawsuit had a lot to say about the bad THS that Diddy and his associates allegedly did too. Jane Doe on the day that the incident happened, the documents said when she was just a teenager, M. Du met Mr. Pierre and the third assailant in a lounge in the Detroit, Michigan area while at the lounge Mr. Pierre. Re insisted that he was best friends with Mr. Combs and even called Mr. Combs with M. Doe Mr. Combs, convinced M. Du, who was half his age at the time, to accompany Mr. Pierre and the third assailant on a private jet to come to his studio in New York City before they left for the private jet Mr. Pierre smoked. Crack cocaine in a bathroom at the lounge, in which he also is S.A.M. Doe, by forcing her to give him oral action, this would have been a horrible thing to happen to anyone but Jane Doe, was only 17 at the time. And Diddy was 34, which made it way worse, and the timeline of this reveals something more sinister, see this alleged incident happened around 2003, which means that it was about four years before he got together with Cassie, and started allegedly started saying her and putting hands on her butt, that's not all because after Cassie, two more women came out to accuse him of allegedly ang them back in the 90s. So this means that this has been going on for about 30 years now. Allegedly okay. So back to the laws. Whitwitch said that Harf Pierre actually walked up to Jane Doe first and started talking to her the documents, said on the evening in question M. Doe was with friends in a lounge when she was approached by who she later learned was Mr. Pierre Mr. Pierre was with his own friends, including the third, assailant Mr. Pierre the third ascent, and their friends were dressed in suits. Mr. Pierre repeatedly complimented M. Dewey's appearance, saying that she was hot among other things. He then began talking about his self-described best friend and brother. Mr. Combs specifically Mr. Pierre continually stated that Mr. Combs would love to meet M. Mr. Pierre, even called Mr. Combs, and put Miss Doe on the line Mr. Combs told Miss Doe that he would love to meet her and that she should accompany Mr. Pierre to New York City in a private jet. So after that, Harvey Pierre allegedly forced Jane Doe to give him some mouth action in the bathrobe of the lawsuit went on to say that Mr. Pierre III, a salant and another. Gentlemen then escorted the high schooler to a private jet, which flew them to Teterboro, New Jersey. There were subbies awaiting the group at Teterboro, and the four of them were driven to Daddy's house recording. Studio A Studio, famously owned and operated by Mr. Combs and Bad Boy, while at the studio, Mr. Combs and his associates, including Mr. Pierre Plied M. Du, with substances as the night wore on the 17-year-old M. Du, became more and more indebriated, even eventually to the point that she could not possibly have consented to having intimacy with anyone much less someone twice her age. It continued, while at the studio M. Du, was say by Mr. Combs the third ascent, and Mr. Pierre in that order, while Mr. Combs was saying, N.M. Doe he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched his nipples as hard as she could. Mr. Combs then watched on as third assailant, who M. Doe had not even realized had begun say M. Doe, as she told him to stop after third assailant was finished Mr. Pierre, took his turn and then forced her to give him oral action, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe the lawsuit. Also said when Mr. Pierre finished he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone Miss Doe fell into the fetal pot Ishin and lay on the floor. Her privates were in pain. Finally, after a period of time, Miss Doe regained her bearings. However, she could barely stand up and had to be helped to walk out of the building and back into a car she was taken back to an airport and flown back to Michigan. However, she has very 
limited recollection of her transport home, and only remembers being in her car sometime early in the morning. This is bad, but can we talk about how similar this is to Cassie's lawsuit where she claimed that Diddy would feed her drugs and alcohol until her inhibition fell away, and then he would force her to hire male escorts and then get intimate with them while Diddy watched recorded and got off on it in Cassie's lawsuit. She said Mr. Combs always supplied Miss Ventura and the escort with copious amounts of D 